Uh, Gladys Ricard uh, was a, a young Dominican woman who came to the United States as an immigrant in the uh, late uh, uh, 70s, early 80s. I, I never met her until I've, I have come to know Gladys through her family and through her friends. And uh, so she, she comes to, to the United States, as many immigrants do, and um, looking for a better life. And she uh, put herself through, um, through college. Uh, she was, um, you know, worked very hard to, to learn English, and she was working at a um, advertisement company uh, downtown, and she was uh, a, um, a, by profession, a, um, um, a fiscal um, um, person uh, uh, in finance. She, was, she became uh, the director of the uh, fiscal department for that company. Uh, one day, Gladys on the train uh, met this man, and this man uh, was very charming, uh, good-looking, fairly good-looking. Uh, he looks awful to me today, but he was a good-looking man <laughs> then. And, uh, and they struck a conversation, exchanged numbers, began dating, and then uh, 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 began living together. Okay. He was very well-connected, not just here. I, not, I don't say this, but someone said this from his camp, that he had an open door policy with Mayor Giuliani, okay, and he also had very close ties back home with the uh, then president of the Dominican Republic. He too was Dominican, uh, Dominican descent, highly educated. One of my favorite schools. Uh, he obtained a uh, master's degree from the uh, University of Puerto Rico, and um, he was, you know, a, a businessman, community leader. Uh, he was the Grand Marshal of the Dominican uh, uh, Parade here in New York. He was well connected. He was and well. very highly uh, respected. And very highly respected. Right. They dated for about seven years. They lived together for um, a couple of years, uh, and the abuse uh, um, began. Uh, it was there. We don't know, like, how it all was because she kept it from her family, as many of us do, right? And um, she came to a point where um, she made that decision, you know, to end the relationship. Uh, there was all kinds of violence, uh, from, from physical to sexual to economic to isolation, everything that you can, it, it was there. So she makes the decision to end the relationship, and she um, uh, moves uh, out. Well over a year after their relationship had ended, uh, she met someone. And quickly, uh, it was a different type of relationship, and uh, they began, you know, he proposed, she accepted, and they were making plans to get married. But this was very quiet. Uh, she didn't want, and she told her family, she didn't want him to know that she was getting married. On the day that, that she was to be married, uh, September 26, 1999, he came uh, to the house, and while she was getting ready to leave, uh, uh, he came in, and in front of all of her family and uh, friends, uh, he pulled out a gun and he killed her. I tell you this because uh, no one... You know, that family did not understand for a number of reasons. She had not fully confided in them, had shared what had uh, gone on. That had not been the first time that he had pulled out a gun, okay, on her. Um, and because uh, the other thing is that, that they, which is my mission, in raising awareness. They didn't understand the horrors of domestic violence. They didn't understand what could happen, what a batterer can do and has done. And everyone there, you know, they didn't want him there, but no one called the police. No one thought that it would come to that.